Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malicote. I'm an anchor reporter for KTVU Fox 2 here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, my guest is the operator of the Arenda Theater in the East Bay here in San Francisco's Bay Area. Uh, my hometown, too. I grew up with the theater, so it's near and dear to my heart. It's been going through, uh, you might say, a bit of a bumpy ride the last four months with uh, COVID-19 in our world. And uh, But there is some good news on the forefront. Let's talk theater. Let's uh, introduce the uh, operator himself. That's Derek Zimrak. How are you? Doing good. Good to see you again, Frank. You as well, Derek. You're uh, on our show quite a bit, uh, our morning show. And uh, I know the theater's been in a, a bit of trouble. Uh, but before we jump into that, why don't you tell, uh, tell us a little bit about the history for some of our viewers, not the area. Uh, the, the, it's uh, 79 years of history, so I'll have to be brief, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it actually opened in 1941. It was supposed to open on Pearl Harbor Day, but obviously that did not happen. So it got postponed, and it opened two weeks later uh, in December 27, 1941. And the rumor has it, off of all these years, was that Bob Hope opened the theater. Well, you know how things go as people talk about things. It was actually uh, Paul Winchell, a ventriloquist, that was often on the Bob Hope show that actually opened the theater. But as time went, Bob Hope opened the theater. But uh, it's a truly a, 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 an icon here in the East Bay and, and all of Northern California, architecturally beautiful, and uh, we're very fortunate to have it. And in 1986, it actually was closed, and uh, they were going to tear it down. Yeah. They were going to tear this down, and the community really, you know, came together as they are right now to actually save the theater, and they reopened it again. So it was it was a wonderful thing that this beautiful, you know, Art Deco theater was not destroyed. So yeah, I know. Well, growing up there, I remember my first movie in 1972. I think was The Godfather there, and the way we were, and uh, so many since then. So I'm I'm glad right. you're still standing. But let's face it, the last four months have been pretty rough. Uh, just talk about what you've been going through since uh, the pandemic hit. Yeah, um, we actually closed the doors on, on uh, March 16th. And uh, we kind of knew, you know, things were gonna, were boiling, let's say. And um, we as a theater made some decisions early on, we, weeks before the pandemic was hitting. Uh, we had social distancing. We were having people wipe down all of the, uh, the doorknobs and the seats after everyone used them. So we had a plan in, in place, but then all of a sudden they said, stop everything and we closed. And the one thing with movie theaters, it's a very marginal business, okay? It's not, it's, it's not like you make a lot of money. There's not much movement. And in most cases, movie theaters make 45 to 50% of their revenue in the months of June and July. So with the closure and also being hit with losing the big Hollywood blockbuster films in June and July, that puts theaters in deep trouble because in most movie, in most movie theaters, I think I should say all movie theaters, you pay your bills as you go along, okay? So the studios bill you three to four weeks after the movie finishes for the run. So on March 16th, it stopped. And on March 17th, every studio sent you an invoice of what was that. Yeah. Oh, we were, I was like $43,000 that we owed the studios, which normally you would wait for next Saturday, get a, you know, a bunch of money because people come to the theater and then pay the bills. So we were abruptly stopped, That's, as were all theaters. So uh, there's an ownership of the theater. You're the yeah. operator. Um, have they been somewhat lenient or have they still said, you know, Pay the freight on the rent. The, the landlord of the building, uh, they have, you know, not been aggressive towards us to say, you know, you must pay the rent. We're paying as we go, um, and they, they, they're working with us. And uh, hopefully the, in the long run, there'll be a renegotiation of, of the lease. So, um, In terms of stimulus, were you helped at all with the PP, PPP? Um, Yes, yeah, but very little. Um, the way the stimulus packages were designed, they were based on payroll. So it was basically uh, two and a half times your, your monthly payroll. So in a movie theater, you know, most of them are part time and then, you know, at minimum wage. And we have some managers who are were making more, but it really wasn't a lot of funds there. And at first, I, I didn't even apply for it because I said, oh, you know, we're going to get $20,000. I'll just 
period. And then all of a sudden it was like, whoa, this is going on another month. And then it was like, it's another month. Okay. The first round of PPP, I, we, we applied, we, we didn't even get it because it was all gone, you know? Oh, wow. So the second release, and we did get a, a little bit, but it, it, it's not enough to keep you, keep you going. In right. this type of well, you got very creative and started a GoFundMe campaign that's had uh, a lot of success. Talk about yeah. the first ticket challenge and how not only Arenda, but the La Marinda area, the East Bay, and I guess you're, you're getting donations from all over the country, right? Country, yeah, it's been it's been absolutely wonderful. So what I did is because we knew that there had to be a plan, and that's what's we're best when we we have a plan in place. And we made an announcement three weeks ago now that we would not be open July, August, and September for the safety of the community, moviegoers, and also our staff because it didn't seem like things were really getting any better. So let's just say instead of going month to month, let's come up with a plan. So what I did. Being a, a numbers person and an accountant, I decided, okay, let's project out all the way to first quarter 2021, just to see where we are. Because in Governor Newsom here in California has also talked about doing similar things to other movie theaters that have opened and since closed, but at 25% capacity of seating and a maximum of 100. Now the Arenda Theater has 750 seats, so but we're only limited to 100. So with those numbers, you're going to be, it's going to be hard to even break even. You'll be at a loss because a theater that has 50 seats is now going to only be 12 seats. So now our 200 seat auditorium is down to 49 seats. So it's like the numbers don't work. I mean, you cannot continue to pay the bills and pay the staff and all that. So I projected all the way out and it came out to, what is an astronomical number of $165,000 to keep us afloat. But I then took it, because being the math person, I said, how many people live in Orinda? Come up with 19,962 people. I said, okay, that's 20,000 people. I divided that number into the 165, and it came out to $8.28 a resident. And I'm like, that's less than our movie ticket. So let's do a one ticket you know donation challenge in the community to help save the and uh that's what we've done and it's really great because we actually had one donor who actually donated ten thousand dollars oh wow he doesn't even live in arinda he had said him and his family know how important it is to the whole east bay right. and see it on highway 24 all the time he sent us a check for ten thousand dollars now Amazing. those are wonderful and great and we really truly appreciate it but it, it's the one, it's the donations that come in at $12, $24, $36, $48. You know, they're taking that challenge in the household and that's great. And uh, like I said, it's not only the people in, you had not only the people in the East Bay, but it's all over the country because we do live concerts also, our, our live at Arinda Theater, where we have Broadway performers who come to our auditorium, perform, which is fantastic. And... Uh, they have been helping spread the word. And one of the agencies gave us, donated $500 yesterday. So it's, it's been really well received all over. So I'm just gonna say, it's gonna warm your heart to know that people care, right? Yeah, it truly is. And the thing is, is like, it takes a lot of stress, you know, to know that you have people around you who love theater and wanna make it work. And, you know, like I said, we posted, we only really did this in social media other than you know, KTVU did a, a news broadcast about a, a week ago, which really helped us because you never know how people are going to hear about it. There's people who've been calling the phones and saying, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. How did you do it? What, what, what can I do to help? What can I do? And it's truly word of mouth in getting out there because on Facebook, we posted in all the historic theaters and architectural groups and all this stuff. And people have been sending, sending in the money. So it, it's really good. And I think we're at 56% of where we are. We were expecting, you know, to be there in December or January, you know, and we're, you know, in, within a week, we're, we're already there. And More than think, a half, which is uh, awesome in the 90,000s now. And uh, let's hope you hit your mark. I, I mean, there's not that many Art Deco old style theaters around. They're all kind of, you know, conglomerates where you've got, you know, 10 shows you go in. They're smaller, more, more boutique. 
I mean, yours is uh, tried and true. You still got the velveteen seats in there and, uh, you know, you really feel like you're at an, an old theater with, uh, with new amenities. And, uh, you know, I think we need more of that. And apparently people are listening, right? And I think also it's, it's people, you know, there's a history here. You know what I mean? If people remember why they came here and what they love about it. You know, um, you know, the younger generation, you know, they're, they, they're, they're content with watching it on their cell phone. Yeah, I got Netflix. I mean, why, why bother? Oh, sorry about that. But, you know, for us older folks, I, um, you know, I haven't lived in Orinda for a number of years, but when I drive by on Highway 24, especially at night when you see, you know, the big marquee lit up in Orinda, it's, uh, you know, it's like welcome home. It's pretty cool. Yeah. A lot of people said, well, I didn't know that that was the name of the town. I thought it was the name of the theater because they just, <laughs> it's a very small community. For you people in the country, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little tiny downtown. <laughs> yeah, and a small, and a small town just uh, east of Berkeley and Oakland. Uh, talk about the future of theaters. Um, you know, say you get to this point, you get the money that you need to kind of keep you uh, solvent until January, February. Um, you know, what lies ahead if they say, you know, Derek, you can open your theater, but you got to do social distancing, you can only do... 25 to 50 per, uh, 50 percent of capacity. I know some restaurants in San Francisco that you know if you do that, you're going to shut them down. Can you survive? Well, I mean, I think with with theaters, um, especially independent theaters, you know, I think we're almost at an advantage over the big, you know, corporate movies theater chains because you know three, four, five years ago, and some even you know a year ago, changed all their theaters into big luxury seats, but they went from 100 seats down to 50 or 30 seats in an auditorium. The numbers don't work, you know? So we're lucky, you know, that we still have the large auditoriums that we do to be able to accommodate people. But the, a few things that we, we have already have in place, we actually have, um, you know, disposable seat covers that we're ready to put on uh, when we open, uh, which, will, which will be nice for the, the residents uh, who come to the movies. And um, also, you know, we have the hand sanitizer and we have the, in the concession stand, we're going to have one of the, the, the sneeze guards, as they call them, you know, <laughs> do all that. But um, I think the one thing that we have advantage over the other ones is we're used to, especially art houses and independent theaters, we're used to doing alternative programming. Like I mentioned before, we have concerts, okay? We've had magicians. We've had comedy shows. We've had lectures, you know? So we've had all these things. So when we're ready to go, I can pick up the phone and schedule out, you know, because we have. We well, you had what Faith Prince? She's won a couple of Tonys. She, oh, uh, yeah. she was yeah. there. Yeah, Faith. Happens. Faith has been here as a performer, and she's also been here to support the other cabaret shows that we've had. And she's she's wonderful, and she's, yeah. she lives. I know so. Um, for the locals here in the Bay Area, the Rain Theater, not too far from you in Moraga, what's the status of that place? Yeah, um, it was bought out in uh, June of last year and uh, it's owned by uh, a chain, uh, Cinema West. And, uh, you know, they did an extensive remodel, but I, I don't really know the status of, of what their plans are at this point. Yeah, but they're, they're not open either, right? Oh, they're not open and, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it warms our heart to know that uh, a lot of folks out there care. If people want to give, if they want more information, what are they gonna do to to join yeah. this uh, one ticket party. Right, the one ticket challenge. Uh, you go to GoFundMe, uh, just type in Arinda Theater, or mm -hmm. if you have Facebook, you can go to the Arinda Theater, and the, you, there's several postings about the GoFundMe. And also we've been selling off uh, some of our, you know, possessions of our, uh, you know, collectibles. Uh, we have uh, stuff we're posting all the time. I mean, some of these posters behind me, and, uh, you know, on Friday we usually have our little under the marquee garage sale, so. And more, and also, um, we didn't bring this up before we let you go, but uh, uh, you know, they built kind of a, a, a bunch of commercial space around the theater when back in the mid eighties when they decided to keep it. And I would imagine those restaurants are on your team too, because people go to the theater, they'll pick up a coffee at Starbucks or uh, grab a sandwich or whatever as well. Absolutely, I mean, I mean, Anytime there's a centerpiece like a movie theater, you know, around other, you know, restaurants, I mean, restaurants survive, uh, 
thrive uh, when you know people come to the movies. When you have four or five hundred people, well, they're looking for you know a meal before or after or for a drink or something. You know, so it's they've been very supportive. You can see on Facebook that they're sharing our posts about the GoFundMe, saying hey, help help the theater, which is helping them also and. Uh, we also uh, are doing the same thing I and mean, we're trying to help each other. And that, that's what the whole thing is, is about right now is we can do it together. So, Well, we're all getting through it together. We're all in the same boat. I know it's been some tough, uh, tough sailing since March, but uh, we are on your team, Derek. All the best with the GoFundMe and let's hope uh, our world opens very soon. That's Derek yeah. Zimak. He's the operator of the Arenda Theater. Thanks. Yeah. Good to have you, Derek. Okay, I'm Frank Malico. For uh, more information, you can go to coronavirusnow.com. Have a great day, everybody.